Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how to follow the CC face topology and UV guide step by step in order to create a CC3 plus character via Headshot 2.0. By following this guide, the characters we make will have more accurate facial expression results. You can find this guide on the main Headshot product page. Pages 3 to 6 are for the topology and UV for the CC neutral character. All CC4 expressions and morphs are made from this CC3 plus neutral character. So if you want your character to have the most accurate facial animation via the Reillusion system, make sure that the character's topology corresponds to that of the CC3 Plus neutral character. Pages 7 to 10 are the key pages relating to topology, covering primary, secondary, and tertiary regions. Primary regions are the main animation drivers, while secondary regions are driven by the primary ones and are needed to keep the mesh smooth and evenly distributed. Tertiary regions are the tear ducts, mouth, and eye sockets, and have minimal effect on the character and are not editable in Headshot 2. On the primary regions, you'll see some thicker reference lines meant to allow us to better localize the distribution of these regions. Let's look at the mouth first. Starting on page 12, you can see how these areas should be distributed. This video demonstrates step by step how to do that with this model. Here we've jumped to the refine mesh step so please check out our Getting Started tutorial if you're not familiar with the features. We know from the info on page 12 that the first thing we need to do is to identify and define the character's lip area, ensuring that the thick reference line outlines the shape of the character's lips. The CC Mesh Opacity slider allows us to see the character's lip position and use the Move brush to adjust the reference line. Follow that by using the smooth brush to smooth out the adjacent mesh areas and adjust the lower lip as well. On page 13 of the guide, you can see the reference for the positioning of the lip corners, which determines the result when the character opens its mouth. You won't need to worry too much about this if you've marked the lip corners properly in the Align Point stage. Page 14 illustrates the position of the border between the lips and the oral cavity. If your model's mouth is open, you can adjust this reference line as shown here. However, generally a model's mouth will be closed by default, so we need to mark the mouth area accurately in the Align Point stage. After that, go to Refine Mesh, switch to Wireframe Mode, and you'll see the proper results. Let's move on to the nose next, found on page 15. A quick biology lesson here, you'll see two alar creases around the nasal wings and the philtrum indentation line underneath the nostrils, both defined with the bolder reference lines. Once again here, keep things tight and get those lines as close as you can to the alar creases around the nostrils. Remember to smooth out your mesh movements for best results. On page 16, you'll see the nasolabial folds. Here you want to place the reference line at the deepest part of the ridge. Defining this area properly is key to producing an accurate smile, as it emphasizes the muscles on the side of the face when your character smiles. Again here, I'm using a combination of the move and smooth brushes to get the reference line positioning correct while maintaining an evenly spaced topology. Defining this area correctly is essential to natural looking smile results. Okay, let's move on to the eyes on page 17. The orange lines mark the border of the eyelids, and gray represents the inner flesh of the eye socket. There are also arrows that mark the triangular regions that form the corners of the eyes. Again, if you've correctly marked the eye points in the aligned point stage, you won't need to do as much adjustment in the refined mesh stage. One tip for when you're adjusting the edge lines for the eyes is to uncheck Keep Borders, as Keep Borders will try to maintain the edge lines. You can use the Smooth Brush again to get a more even topology. For the corners of the eyes, you want to make sure that they're clean and even as well. On pages 18 and 19, you'll find the reference lines for the upper and lower eyelids, which are very important for character eye closing. You'll want to place this line along the proper crease area in order to get the best eye movements when your character blinks or closes its eyes. It's particularly important to get a smooth mesh around the eyes, as it's a sensitive area for mesh breakage due to the curvature and eyeball mesh underneath. 
On page 20, you'll find the eyebrows, which are relatively simple compared to the other areas of the face. Generally, you want the eyebrow line in the reference mesh to go right through the middle of where you plan for your eyebrow to be. Character Creator has a number of eyebrow templates that you can apply, and even more that can be found in the content store. The forehead guide, found on page 21, is particularly important when it comes to defining the location of forehead wrinkles and hairline. As you can see, a smooth mesh will help to create a more natural looking distribution of wrinkles on the forehead. There is also a major reference line that should be placed along where your character's hairline is set to begin. You don't need to worry about extreme widow peaks or anything like that. The main thing is to maintain this line smoothly along the contours of the forehead at where you expect the hair to be at its lowest point. Okay, it's time to move on to the ears, which can be found on pages 22 and 23. You'll often find that the inside of the character's ear doesn't conform to a standard shape and it doesn't get involved a lot in expression animations, so the main goal here is to ensure that there is a full wrap around the ear mesh, and that said ear mesh is smooth. With the ears, there are two main tips that will help you to get the best results. The first is to uncheck Conform to Source Mesh, to ensure that you can move your generated mesh more freely to encompass the source mesh. It often makes sense to use a project brush to conform your generated head mesh more closely to the original mesh and refine it. Okay, finally let's look at the lower jaw which can be found on page 24. This determines the definition of where the lower jaw meets the front of the neck. The result of defining this major reference line is how the character's jaw interacts with the neck when the mouth is open, and when looked at from the side, this line will generally be at a 45 degree angle, although that can vary significantly based on your character's physical characteristics. Again, it's best to ensure here that there is no jagged topography by using the smooth and move brushes in combination. Alright, once everything is ready and you're happy with your smooth topography, it's time to move on to generate the character. Click Attach to Body to give the standard body options, and no face mask in this case since we're using a complete mesh. Now you can see that the generated mesh looks excellent and identical to the source mesh. However, only one of them can animate using iClone's tools. To test everything out, you can use the Edit Facial tool to move individual muscles and test the results. Again, keep in mind that you can always go back and edit your saved profile for more tweaking. That's it for this video guide. Hopefully it can help you to optimize the animated results for your character. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.